everyone. Glad you could join us today here at Weinig Holzer in Mooresville, North Carolina. We are glad to be coming to you live from our showroom today with a really great demo for you and some very good information. But before we get into it, I'd like to introduce this gentleman sitting here with me. Let him introduce himself, actually. Kevin Grimion, Application Specialist for the Edge Managers. Great. Well, Kevin is going to be working with me today, and we want to talk about our GlueJet glue application system. Uh, I would say, without a doubt, that this is one thing that is unique to Holzer and no other edge bander on the marketplace. You know, every other machine out there, they all have end trimming stations, they all have flush trimming stations, buffing, you name it. But none of them have a glue application system like we have with this glue jet. You're absolutely right. Everybody else uses glue pots, and they use that to apply the glue before the banding is on, but only Holzer has a glue jet application system. So what we want to do today, hopefully, is dispel some of the myths, clean up some of the confusion, maybe, change some of the conceptions or misconceptions that people have right. about the glue jet system, and just really clearly show how it works, the way that it works, and what makes it so unique in our machines today. So I'm going to kind of get the conversation started. Kevin's here for the technical aspect of it. And uh, we're live. We are actually live right now sitting in our showroom. So if you have questions, type yes. them in at the bottom. We've got the expert here. He can answer them for us right live while you're listening. Yeah, it'd be and great to have a, 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 a constant a, discussion yeah. from everyone out there. A so, dialogue, uh, yeah. Please, please send us a lot of questions, and uh, we'll try to give you a lot of answers. Sure. I'm quite sure that no matter how long you've been in the industry, you've heard different comments and different statements regarding the glue jet system. And if we don't answer those questions, then put them in there at the bottom to say, hey, somebody told me that, and then we'll try to address that question for you today. So what we want to do now is we just want to start right from the beginning. Where it all begins is right here where the glue is inserted into the system. And everybody knows that we're using the cartridges or the pellets. So I'm going to let Kevin take it from here, and we can start kind of explain how this whole thing works. Yeah, Dan, if you want to use the, uh, the pellets, like over here, we have a hopper where pellets can go inside. Fits right on the system like this. A little gate on the bottom to open and close it so that pellets can drop down. Mm -hmm. When you want to take it off or if you want to change color or go to a different process we can simply close the gate so pellets don't come out right. of the hopper and make a big mess take it off and put it aside great right. if we're using cartridge system we can use the cartridge hopper here the whole three inside the, the hopper and then one down in the chamber as well of course one down in the right. in the chamber ready to go and it will auto feed uh, put one cartridge behind another just the same way with granulate mm -hmm. it continuously reloads behind uh, when, when the glue gets a little bit low between right. the panels, and you don't ever notice an interruption in part. Okay. Great. So I think right there, right off the bat, there's one of probably the misconceptions that I've heard over the years in the industry is that, oh, you can't use pellets or you can't use granulate. You can only use cartridge. Cartridges cost more than pellets, and you're being forced to use cartridges. Well, right there you can see that these systems can work with pellets or with cartridge. Either way, it doesn't matter. Once you put the glue in there, no matter what form it's in, mm -hmm. everything after that's the same. That's right. That's Great. right. It's very versatile. Great. So we have a cartridge in there now that you can see. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can pick that up a little bit. Maybe I can get that out of there. Mm -hmm. So here's the cartridge. They come in different colors, mm -hmm. different types of glue. And so the cartridge would be inserted into there. Kevin, go ahead and tell us what happens after that. Yeah, after the cartridge is dropped down. Uh, the cylinder here is when the panel comes into the machine. The cylinder here is going to push the cartridge forward into the waffle heater right here. Right. And this is where the magic happens. This is what actually melts it on demand. Because we're only heating the front end of that this glue stick here, Dan, we have a three-minute heat-up time. Right. That's from cold room temperature to applying glue is three minutes. That's right. So Worst case get, scenario is three minutes. We can get a close-up here. Let's see if we can get the there. camera in there. Oh, you're upside down, Christian. Christian can change there you our go. angle there of our we camera. Go. So you can see we have a cutaway model here. So you can see the, the waffle on this end here. 
This is what heats the, the glue. And uh, just perforated and goes right through into a, uh, a chamber reservoir right behind it. And this is where the glue is going to be ready to go up into the machine when the parts come by. One thing we need to explain that this is a cutaway model. That's right. We've cut the waffle heater in half. We've cut some components apart up here so that you can see the internal workings really That's well. Right. I didn't want people to think that that waffle heater is it's cut like that. It's a nope, circle. Not <laughs> exposed. Uh, yeah. So when the glue comes in, it'll come in and get melted right into the waffle. There right you go. There. So it makes it easy to see. There you go. That's right. So that waffle heater, there's different heating elements inside that waffle heater as well, right, Kevin? There are five heaters inside that waffle. So uh, okay. they are sealed inside the waffle. Uh, right. Maintenance free. And that's part of the reason that it heats up so quickly because we have five heating elements in there. That's right. In a small surface area in front of that cartridge, so it gets up to temperature quickly. Yep. And then again, we're only melting the glue that we need. Correct. That entire cartridge is not melted. It's only melted as we need it, That's as right. panels are fed through the machine. Yes. Which, unlike the glue pot, yes. which is common on every other brand of machine, they're heating up the entire glue pot. The entire thing, and it's rotating and right. circulating. Right, because... If you've seen some glue pots, and we have some pictures here, I think Christian's helping us over here behind the scenes yeah. a little bit. Here's a great picture of a glue pot. You notice the color of the glue? Yes, it's uh, crusted on the outside. Yeah, it's crusted. Usually, uh, uh, back in the day when I did work on these types of machines, people put white glue in to get a medium brown right. glue out. <laughs> to um, kind of dilute the burnt glue yes, so that it gets a lighter yes. color. Yes. And it keeps caking and crusting along the side. And when these chips break loose or such, yeah, they get up in there gets up inside, maybe do some clogging. But also, in this case, you have to send it out to get rebuilt Yep. if you don't have the process in-house. Right, so there's a couple points that are really important. On a glue pot, the same glue is heated and melted that's right. and cooled down. Then we reheat the same glue again, mm -hmm. melted. And so that's why, over time, it's why it turns brown. Yes. It's the same glue is heated, cooled off, heated, and cooled off. Right. And if you talk to the glue manufacturers, the ideal scenario for glue is to heat it once and use it. That's right. Which is what we're doing. We never reheat the same glue. That's right. The, the glue changes a little bit of the chemical structure of the glue, and you lose your adhesion. This right. is why they want this. Right. And also, um, in the glue pot, when it's circulating, it's touching air, mm -hmm. oxygen, right. while it's hot. And this is what causes the oxidation. Mm -hmm. It causes it to, to, uh, to turn brown right. That's where and start color. caking on there. Right. When our stick is inside the machine here, it starts to be melted in the front. Okay. The stick... Part of the stick that's just warm behind it that yeah. hasn't quite melted yet is sealing it from the air. So even if we turn off the, and on the machine continuously right. throughout the day, we will not get any burning on the on the waffle. We never have right. to clean it out. Good, good point. And on another, it, right along with that, is many manufacturers of machines with the glue pots have actually whole departments dedicated to rebuilding the glue pot. Right. Because you can see from these pictures. Uh, maybe Christian can pop them back up there. We've got some other pictures here. You can see from some of these pictures that just by the nature of a glue pot and the way that it works, mm -hmm. that over time, you're going to reach a point where you can't use it anymore and That's it right. needs to be rebuilt. That's right. That's right. It'll either clog up or, in this case, you know, it starts spilling over. Right. It gets on the other components of yep. the machine. And uh, this, yeah. can, uh, this can cause a lot of problems. And the cost of rebuilding a glue pot is probably several thousand dollars. I'm well, it's substantial, but the... Um, the, the biggest cost really is your downtime. Right. So you either have to buy a second glue pot yep. and all the components and yep. heaters to go with it uh, if you have an interchangeable Right, because when you send yours off to be rebuilt, what do you do? You're down. Right, so you You're buy down. a second pot to keep running while the old one's being rebuilt. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. So we, so we don't, don't even, yeah, we don't even have a rebuild department here at Holzer because no. we don't need one no. by the nature of the way this system works. That's right. That's right. So. Good. All right. So continue on with your explanation yeah. there. And I'll remind everybody, if you have some uh, comments or questions, uh, please fill them in. We're here, uh, ready to answer anything you have for us. So, uh, yeah. So the next step, Dan, is for when or after it gets melted and pressed in mm -hmm. here, is when the panel comes by, it's going to come all across the front of the face of the nozzle here. Correct. And this is when the gate opens and closes. And if uh, Christian wants to zoom in on the, the yeah. front of the machine here. There you go. You can see the face of that nozzle. Uh, right here. 
the, uh, the glue is extruded out onto the panel as is needed. Right. So we only pressurize and extrude the glue as the panel comes mm -hmm. by. And we can also, by how much this nozzle opens and closes, we can control the volume of glue as well. That's right. So uh, for in, like in this example here, mm -hmm. we can see the, the lines of glue on the panel. And you can see how we've even filled into the voids of the typical chipboard panel. Right, because so, it's under pressure when it's actually coming out. That's right. Going into the voids in the in the particle board. So just like a hot melt glue gun, when the harder you squeeze the trigger, the more right. glue you get out. Yep. So we can control from the controller, the computer controller, mm -hmm. we can control the air pressure that we're pushing on the cartridge. So Good. we can control the volume of glue coming out. And then the pressure with which it's actually coming out. Of. That's correct. Good. So maybe turn your board around there and just show how it would be if it was passing in front of the nozzle. Yeah, yeah. so if it was passing through. Right, it so it just come, come through like that. Through here. Now we have a shoe to make sure that the, the, the glue is always right at the top of the panel. So even if the panel varies a little bit, it will float up and down. Right. And it will come through like this and onto the pressure rollers to get the edge Good. bandings. So that, that's one important feature that you just mentioned there, Kevin. That's the fact that that shoe rides on the top. Yes. And it because we know that particle board melamine is not perfect that's right. 19 millimeters the entire length of the board. There's some right. variation in there, a couple tenths of a millimeter, whatever it might be. So because the shoe is literally tracing the face, we're opening and closing as needed so that we always have the right amount of glue for the width of the panel that we're running. That's right, Good. that's right. So we pre-spread it uh, on the nozzle there, mm -hmm. and we get one millimeter stripes across the front and also inside injected into the panel under pressure. So then we have really great adhesion. So when we come across the pressure rollers, we only have to press it and flatten it right. out. And because we're injecting only on the face of the panel, unlike a glue roller, mm -hmm. where we don't have the surface tension pulling Pulling extra glue and pop and right. on the panel. Right. Good. A lot cleaner. Yeah, that's a big difference. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, I've seen a lot of machines with glue rollers, and the roller is a good bit taller than the thickness of the panel, and the entire surface area of the roller is covered in glue, but we only have a three-quarter inch panel, so we have a, a tendency to get extra glue on the top and the bottom, right. which it has to be cleaned up at some point. So it, it's a much cleaner, neater process with the glue jet. I see we have a a comment or a question. Uh, it's about the uh, the holes in the glue jet getting plugged. Okay. Okay. So the glue jet has a slot. There's no holes. There's no holes in it. Right. Um, we used to have holes uh, on the older mm -hmm. models, and the only time those would get plugged up if someone didn't do their daily maintenance of just right. simply brushing it off. Right. So I think that's one of the big misconceptions is the fact that we've changed the design of the, yes. the glue nozzle. Mm -hmm. In the, in the past or previously, we did have individual holes in there. And if a customer was not diligent with his maintenance, it was a possibility that they could be plugged up. That's right. But now there's no holes. It's just a slot. Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult, if not impossible, for the, the slot to be... Uh, Pretty much impossible. Pretty much impossible. Yeah. So. Yep. Good. Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. Great question. So after we've, we've put on the glue, we're ready to press it on and continue down the machine with absolute adhesion. Good. I'd also mention, uh, Dan, that uh, in the process here, we have two thermostats on the machine. Okay. This is for absolute control. So we want to control the glue temperature where we're melting it, so down below. Mm -hmm. We also have another heater and th uh, thermal couple on the top right here. And these control the exact temperature that we're applying to the panel. So there's no air involved, right. uh, and air is a natural insulator. Yep. So we're absolutely sure of the temperature going yeah. onto the panel because and onto our substrate. That's really important because if we set the thermostat at 200 degrees Celsius, whatever it might be, we want to make sure that the glue is being applied to the board at 200 degrees Celsius, that that's there's correct. no cooling off because that temperature that the glue is applied is critical to the bond. Yes. We don't want the banding falling off. We don't want it coming off later on down the road somewhere. So the fact that we can so precisely control the glue temperature as it's applied is really important. That's right. Uh, and to that point, is it's very critical that once we put on the panel uh, here, that next step on the pressure rollers, just down line, is still at the right temperature. Yes. Yep. We do have some cooling. This naturally happens. It's called open time. Right. But if you notice, since we don't have a glue roller, 
with yeah. a very thin nozzle, right. we're able to put it a lot closer to the pressure right. rollers. If you look at a machine with a glue pot and measure from the glue roller to the first pressure roller, measure that distance, and then look at any one of our machines from the nozzle to the first roller, you will see that that distance is significantly shorter. Yes. And that's the open time that Kevin was talking about. That's and right. And therefore, you don't have very much time for the glue to cool down before the banding is applied to the top of it. That's, that's right. That's critical. That's really important. And then the other thing that Kevin mentioned, and you can probably see it in the video here, just look how thin this nozzle is. That allows us with our banding, whether it's solid wood, uh, PVC, whatever it might be, the angle with which we can apply the banding is much lower, much closer, so we don't have this big steep angle coming in there and trying to press it to the to the board. So that's, that's, right. that's another big benefit of the glue nozzle. That's right. That's right. It's a very, very uh, steep angle. Yep. So doesn't uh, we, when we do the wood or some uh, rigid strips, yeah. they're not slapping on the board. Right. Or possibly even cracking or breaking. Or, I, or I've breaking. seen that happen sometimes because the angle is so steep. Pressure rollers pushing against it, something has to give. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, another benefit. Another right. Another benefit. Good. Okay. Let's uh, keep moving on. Let's say we didn't uh, – let's talk about some of the different types of glue that we want to say. First of all, let's yeah, talk sure. about colors. Okay. You know, cartridges come in different colors. I think yeah. we've got some uh, – yeah. so let's just say we wanted to change the color of the glue. So there's a lot of different colors out there. Mm -hmm. What's the process for doing that? Is it quick? Is it easy? Is it difficult? Talk, no, it's, talk uh, us through that. It's very easy. You have two options, really, is that if we've only started the, or only gone through this stick partially, mm -hmm. I can actually pull it out and use it later. Okay. Okay. So you take it out. Be careful of the front end um, of glue uh, on the side. And we can put it aside and let it cool. Right. And use it later. So that we don't have to waste that. It's not, right. not going to be thrown away. We put the other color behind it. Okay. And then on the controller, there's a one button press to do a purging. And this will come out of the purge port in the front. All right. Okay. Good. So we can tell through the purge port when it changes colors. And right. uh, we got a video. Don't show the video yet, Christian. We're going to talk about one we'll other come thing. To that in yeah, a we'll minute. come to that in just a second. But okay. it'll come out the front when we see the, another color coming. Right. We'll simply run a, a panel to confirm that we've, we've transitioned right. from one color to the next and we're ready to go. Right. So those of you that are using glue pots or maybe using a glue pot, think about changing the color on a glue pot. It is, well, they don't do it. You wouldn't do it because it's impossible to get all that glue out, put a new color in, melt it, you know, get it going. That's, that's just not practical that you would do that. So they don't change color. But the ability to match the banding with the glue or the glue with the banding is critical and very easy to literally, it's just a couple minutes to purge, put your new color in there That's and right. go with it. So in, uh, we can kind of see that I have two panels here. Um, one of them, the black panel actually has white glue on it, which is pure white. And the other panel has a natural okay. color on it, which is a natural color. Yeah, panel. matches the panel. Yeah. Good. One other thing, that we're kind of talking about the purging goes hand in hand with it is the ability to do PUR glue with this glue system here. Yes, that's right. Talk to us about that because the nice thing here is that we don't have to modify or change anything. What is the process for doing PUR glue on, on our glue jet? Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> we, we could take out the EVA and or uh, in the morning, we'll yeah. simply load in, let's say a cartridge of PUR. Okay. Uh, we'll push it in. And we'll start purging uh, until we have the PUR coming out of the purge port at okay. the bottom. One of the big concerns with everybody that uses PUR glue is, okay, what do you do? How much time do I have? Is it going to lock up everything in there, cure, and be a big brick when it's all done? You know, Do I have to rush and get it out of there? Can I go to lunch? Can I take a break? Do I have to run continuously? How, how does that all work? Those are uh, great concerns, which are actually not, not a concern at all. So m most PUR uh, formulas can be open for eight to ten hours. Okay. And during that time, I can heat and cool, heat and cool. It's okay. So take a minute and explain what causes PUR to begin to cure. Well, it's the R, okay, if you will. It's what's called reactant. So this is a, it's a reactant that's based upon the moisture in the air is what's going to cause it to start to cure. Okay. So you have about an eight to ten hour open time until this reaction begins. Okay. So in the morning, someone's gonna only open up maybe three or four cans, which you can do about 70 meters 
on it's one quarter cartridge. inch board okay. with one cartridge. Good. That's a good benchmark of what what you. So you know based on how much banding you have to do that right. day, how mm -hmm. many cartridges you're going to need. Yeah. Then maybe after lunch we'll open a few more uh, mm -hmm. that way, and now the time starts again. Right. So that we don't have to worry about opening the glue in the morning and having right. to worry about the evening. Now we have another eight hour window. Right. So you can you can stop, go to lunch, come back and keep running, and not have to worry that it hardened. Yeah, I think not a problem. It runs just like an EVA. You don't really yeah. notice, other than we're putting on at a lower temperature. Right. And what's the temperature difference? Usually it's about 140 Celsius, Celsius. Uh, for PUR, and EVA is about 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so there's a big temperature difference there. That's for there sure. is. And that's a big advantage when it comes to the applications. Mm -hmm. uh, some materials or some materials I want to edge band uh, or materials to be banded, uh, will not take a 200 degree temperature. Right, it's too hot. It will simply melt yeah, the melts, parts. Yeah, it does. So elevator, acoustical panels, right. etc. cetera. Uh, a styrofoam, let's say gator board. Yep. Uh, you you can't careful. put on 200 degree glue on this. It just it'll melts just it when it comes disappear. in. Yeah, when it comes in contact with it, it's, it's gone. It's gone. It yeah, melts. good. That, well, that's a good application. And the other, some of the other benefits are the PUR. Like Kevin just said, the lower application temperature. Talk about the moisture and heat proof or resistance that it is after it's completely cured. Yeah, so, um, so once it cures, it is completely heat proof. Um, if uh, Chris can zoom in again, maybe on the front of the machine, or Dan, you can use your, your camera there. You can see that this is a typical stick of EVA uh, here. We're going to get the right camera angle on it. And then you, you can kind of see the differences a little bit. Uh, come on, we're getting it for you. <laughs> but one of them is uh, EVA. And it's a, um, it's basically like a rubber glue, and it's going to stay go. rubbery even after it, it. Uh, there, there we go. go. All right. So this one on this side is my EVA, and it's sort of like a rubber glue. Yeah, this one here. Yep. And this one on this side is the PUR, and okay. it will become like a plastic, okay. so it can no longer heat again. All right. Yeah. So once it's cured, it's cured. You don't have to worry about in a really hot environment, a tractor trailer truck somewhere sitting in the middle of the desert. It, the temperature gets so hot that the glue reactivates and the edges fall off. That's right. That's one of the big benefits of PUR. That's right. There's no concern of that. Good. Mm -hmm. And then it's also, we wouldn't say necessarily that it's waterproof, that you can't take a board and stick it in water. But for high moisture areas with a lot of humidity, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about the, the, the humidity or the moisture affecting the bond or the glue or the banding coming off. That's right. That's yeah. right. Or especially uh, maybe when it's installed next to an oven or above where the coffee right. maker and coffee stand is. This is also uh, right. where the steam, yeah. actually, the heat of the steam will loosen the mm -hmm. banding. Right. Once we get any moisture intrusion, obviously, the yeah. melamine will not hold up to this yeah. chipboard. I've also seen a lot of... Uh, People do locker rooms like college locker rooms, professional sports teams mm -hmm. and their locker rooms. There's a lot of moisture in there from sweaty bodies to damp towels, That's right. damp athletic gear, and they throw it in there. Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of moisture. And so, again, it protects that that would affect That's the right. banding coming off. That's so right. those, are, those are good uh, good applications for people. Another area is medical. <laughs> uh, so they're constantly cleaning with chemical cleaners. Right. Um, and we don't want to, uh, this, these will some, somewhat uh, dissolve right. the glue that is in, okay. the, in the joint. Sure. And these will absolutely. Right. So I think PUR is just an insurance policy, if you would, that no matter what the environment, no matter what the circumstances are, your edge is pretty much guaranteed it's going to stay on there. I have another one for you. Okay, what would that All be? All right. So PUR, uh, the viscosity is half the thickness. So it's okay. double viscosity, which means it's thinner. Right. Backwards term, yep. if you will, sort of like grits of sandpaper. Yeah. So it's a higher viscosity, so therefore it's thinner. Mm -hmm. So they can go on a lot uh, uh, tighter, right. and we have a very, very tight, mm -hmm. tight seam. So it doesn't take as much glue to get a, a good bond. Correct. And uh, and also when we squeeze it down, it squeezes a lot tighter. Right. Some might equate this to, uh, let's say, the difference of Nutella and honey. There you go. So Sweet. I ate lunch. But I'm always hungry. Okay. So everyone knows me. Well, but Christian I, has a video of this that kind of explains a great video. This, uh, how it's, the viscosity. It's the peanut butter and honey video. That's right. Right. So this so, really explains the viscosity. You can see, and Kevin can talk you through it. Yeah, you can see how honey, of course, as we all know, it's pretty thin. It wants to run everywhere. And how this can go into uh, 
goes into the pores of the bread, just like the pores of the panel. It's like a, a chipboard panel. So it's very easy to, to penetrate into the panel. Uh, this is the equivalent of uh, the EVA. So just like the brown EVA I have up here, it's just like a stick of Nutella, if you will. And when these are both spread on, as you can see, the viscosity is much different. So when you squeeze the banding onto the board with the EVA, since it's thicker, it wants to really wants to squeeze out, maybe yeah. cause a little bit of a mess. It comes out and mm -hmm. makes a mess. That's right. So when we do the PUR, it's permeated into the panel, and no squeeze out. No squeeze out. So that's why we get a much tighter seam. Yeah. That really portrays what we're trying to say right. in words. Gives you a good visual representation of that. So yeah, that's, that's, right. so that's the difference between the regular hot melt or EVA glue as it's called compared to the PUR. And then the bond that we get out of that PUR is really strong. We yep. don't have to have nearly as much glue in between there. It is. Uh, it becomes a permanent bond. Yep. Nice. Nice. Um, there's one other application. I can go on and on about this. I keep going. It's crazy, but uh, everyone's always coming to us for PUR applications. Another one was a customer is simply running just simple thin veneer onto plywood panels. Mm -hmm. And you'd wonder, why do we want this? Because after they process their panel, they're going into a UV oven and an automatic sprayer system. And the UV is very hot, and this will release EVA banding, and the banding will start to fall off okay. as it's being finished. So in automation uh, finish yeah. rooms, uh, this is where also PUR. Very, very important. I see on the screen over here, Kevin, we have a question that says, what about off-gassing from PUR? How is that different on a glue jet compared to a glue pot? Well, a glue jet is a sealed system. So once it goes in, only melted glue is in the sealed right. area here. And when it's produced onto the panel, it's only during that open time that's ever exposed to right. air. As opposed to a glue pot where it's the just, whole thing is open and exposed. Open constantly. Right, mm -hmm. good. Since we jumped back to there real quick, uh, we didn't talk about purging. We talked yeah. about we can go to lunch, we can take a break, we don't have to worry about the glue hardening in the glue system. But there's going to come a point at the end of the day when we're done. We're done. We're going home. That's right. What do we do at that point? That's right. that's one thing we need to clear up before we go on any further. Yeah. And I think Christian has a really good video that he can show us that so, really explains that. And Kevin's got some samples here uh, also as well. Yeah, so... Uh, each PUR company will have their own purging agent, and it's important to use the matched one that goes with that one right. because these are now, uh, PUR is a chemical glue okay. uh, for the, the, the purging agent must match. So the purging agent is uh, usually a different color, obviously, uh, blue or red, and it's not just to see that it has come out. We can use this visually, but also, what if we don't get all of it out? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's 2 or 3% that we didn't quite mm -hmm. get all of out of it. No worry, because the purging is also a deactivator. Okay. It would deactivate any little bits. Right, because it came in contact with it somewhere in the system, somewhere even though it may, melted. may have got stuck in a corner somewhere, which is hard to do, but That's it's, right. it's possible. That's right. It, it's possible if someone doesn't really run the purging right. con, uh, continuously or mm -hmm. do the whole stick, then they could have some small little pockets. Right. Once it deactivates that. Then nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. It will reheat up next okay. week. So I would put in a purging agent instead of the glue. Let's say the last glue stick, if you will. I can put one in, and then I can purge it out. So Christian has a really great video on this where it shows how we can, with a one-button press, someone's going to put in the cartridge. In this case, it's the red one. One press on the controller. And then it starts to purge out the front, what we were talking about before. You can see his PUR is there. It's starting to turn red. More and more red. Yep. And we'll just let the cartridge go. And this only takes a couple minutes. And uh, we're cleaning the machine. We're yeah. blowing off the machine. Right. And simply, when it's done, it will automatically stop okay. for us. Great. And, uh, so now we know we've neutralized. We've, we've neutralized. We've, we've, we've purged almost all of the POR out of there. Correct. And anything that might be in there, we've neutralized. It's so we don't have anything to worry about. There's nothing to worry so about. Now we can turn our machine off, go home, come yep. back in the morning, ready to go again. And you can see the purging for it here. A little bit of a close-up yeah, there. There it is right there. There you go. So it just purges out of this hole here. Mm -hmm. That's on the face of the nozzle right 
right below where the application right. goes onto the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where does all that glue go or all that purging agent go, Kevin? That's a good question. So uh, there's a catch bin that comes from the purging port here. goes into a catch bin. And we give you a stainless steel bin like this. Okay. And it'll simply go in. You can line it or spray it. If you don't have this, some customers just put in a, a piece of paper down below. Anything to catch it. Right. And this is easy accessible. If you look at the sprint behind me, you can actually see the, the catch tray right here. And so there's a, a cutout in the back of the machine so the operator can simply pull this out at the end of the day. You can see yeah. that there's a red pancake in yeah. there. Because especially once it cools, it's easy to just pop the whole thing right out of oh, there. Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it comes it's, out very easy. The purging agent is sort of like a wax, if yeah. you will. And even if you put PUR or EVA directly into the, mm -hmm. the tray, it will also, when it cools, it will come right out. Great. Good. All right. Well, that is good. I think we have... So there's another oh, question. Yeah. yeah. Can you purge PUR with EVA? I've been asked this a lot. Yep. Absolutely not. <laughs> never, never do this. And why is that? Well, when EVA is uh, melted, it naturally produces uh, and off gases H2O, a steam, if you will. And steam is what, what activates right, the PUR. PUR. Yep. And like we said before with the, the, the purging agent, it's a deactivator. So if you miss some of the PUR, you will simply activate it inside the station mm -hmm. and eventually close it up mm -hmm. if you miss. Make it worse. Yes. Right. Okay. So good question. Ab good answer. Not. Great question. Great question. Yeah, because I have seen people do that. So whenever you purchase PUR glue, you need to purchase the cleaning agent with it. That's right. That's right. Um, it's not to be very scary. Uh, it's very simple to purge it out. It's a one-button mm -hmm. press. Uh, a lot of times I give people the analogy of... Uh, mixing cement in a wheelbarrow. I think we have all done this at yeah. home on the weekends. Maybe now more so than ever. If you've been <laughs> you've at home, seen, yeah, seen uh, a lot of extra time on uh, hands working from home uh, as much as you can. I think yeah. you've maybe done some cement in the wheelbarrow. So at the end of the day, we know that we have to grab the water hose and rinse everything out before we go in and okay. eat supper. So uh, if you don't, the next day you go down to Lowe's or Home Depot. We'll Thankfully, they're open, and get a new, and wheelbarrow. Get a new wheelbarrow shovel. <laughs> right. But because, if you clean it out, you can use the same wheelbarrow. Right. right? And yeah. the garden hose is right there. So it was only a, a small moment yeah. of right. rinsing it out. Yeah. I think the big thing for everybody to understand is the misconception that you've got to be quick. You can't just stop. Oh, it's going to harden. It's going to ruin my glue station. Oh, what do I do? You can see it's not like that. You have hours. Yes. Hours to work with it. That's and right. really the only time is at the end of the day that you want to make sure that it's mm -hmm. clean. Everything's purged out. That's Nothing right. Nothing to worry about. That's right. Good. Wow. Well, That's we've a covered one. a lot of information here. Mm -hmm. We've had some good questions. Hopefully you got a good uh, understanding of how the system works, some of the components, and um, what our glue jet system is compared to a glue pot. That's right. That's right. So, Kevin, um, is there anything you'd like to say as we wrap things up? Well, um, I've been asked about um, maybe like, if we're running just EVA, what kind of maintenance do I have to do? That's a good question. Right. Yeah. Um, if I'm running EVA, I can just simply turn it off. I don't ever have to put any cleaner or ever clean okay. the waffle. Uh, not like the glue pots we looked at earlier. I don't have this problem at all. We give you a wire brush. It's just a standard steel brush. And on the front of the nozzle here, right. we're simply just going to brush the Where the, the grooves are on the Where face. Where the grooves yeah. are. Good. So over time, maybe you know three or four months, you might start getting some buildup. Yeah. So we like to have people brush the uh, the nozzle there. Okay. Yeah, and that's part of what we train our customers as part of the the maintenance procedure with the glue system. That's right. The the good thing is you can look down in this area here where the cartridge is and the waffle heater, and a year from now, five years from now, it virtually looks just like it is today. That's right. Because there's no melted glue coming back into the system. There, it's only going into the waffle heater and through the nozzle out onto the panel. So pretty clean, pretty neat, very effective. Yeah. Very effective. Very, very effective. Ah, the grooves? Uh, yeah, sure. Or right here. So I'll, I'm just going to brush this area. So we'll open the beam up. The shoe will lift up. And we can just simply run a wire brush just right there. Brush it up. Clean. All right. Well, wow, that's good. We covered a lot of um, important information. Hopefully we answered a lot of questions, maybe dispelled 
some uh, myths, some misconceptions in the marketplace. And again, if you see this video and you have questions, you can put them in there. We will be monitoring it, and it'll be up there for you to see on our Weinig Holzer Facebook page uh, even after today. Mm -hmm. So thank you to everybody for watching. Kevin, thank you for all the good information that you've shared with us. And you can't see Christian, but he's hiding over here behind the scenes. That's right swapping back and forth between the videos and the different cameras we've got here today and we appreciate everybody for watching and thank you for tuning in look forward to seeing with you again have a good day have a great day